My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled The Power Industry's Killer App, Blockchain. And now for something completely different. If you're expecting a story about the oil and gas industry, today's story will be about how blockchain could be a killer app for the power and utility sector. It'll either kill the industry or it will be used by the industry to kill. Recently, I spent a couple of hours with the power utility on the potential impacts that blockchain technology could have on the broader utility sector. I structured the meeting with initial exploration of how blockchain technology actually works by playing a word game that approximates Bitcoin mining. Once the concepts became clearer, I then turned to the examples of blockchain innovations in the power sector. We spent some time discussing other sectors of interest like retailing and trading, and finally looked at the impacts of combining blockchain with other digital technologies such as artificial intelligence. Blockchain technology is also called distributed ledger technology or DLT. It's really a dull abbreviation. I'm a fan of the far more creative branding you find in cryptocurrencies. Ethereum, for example, a name which reminds me of the fictitious mineral in the Avatar movie, Unobtainium. A lot of people are clearly believers in distributed ledger tech. Venture capital to the tune of a billion dollars or more now backs the more than 800 companies in the sector. Even the World Economic Forum is in on the hype and projects that 10% of global GDP will be stored on DLT by 2025, or something north of $10 trillion. Now, normally my podcast digs into the impacts of digital directly on oil and gas, but in this case the impacts are more indirect. Specifically for oil and gas, natural gas itself is used to generate power, and as gas replaces coal in power applications, digital innovations in power can impact the market for gas. Frankly, power utilities are at risk of getting absolutely hammered by changes coming at the sector, many of which are enabled by digital solutions such as blockchain. Well, what kind of changes? Well, the utility business model hasn't changed much for over 100 years. Since the time of when Thomas Edison invented the integrated power utility, electrons have flowed in one direction, from a big central power generator along big transmission lines, into the local distribution company, and finally into the home or business to provide power for lights, appliances, and machines. Monopolies prevailed. The roles of the players in this industry, that is generator, transmitter, distributor, and consumer, were pretty much fixed and stable. The things that consume power, lights and appliances, were pretty much fixed in place and were manually switched on and off by people. Power generation itself is already very efficient. Large-scale central plants and 100 years of innovation has squeezed almost all of the cost out of fossil fuels like coal. Byproducts like emissions and water usage have been free and borne by society. Utilities are all optimized around these features, with large centralized systems, command and control top-down management structures, surveillance of the infrastructure using SCADA systems, an integrated supply chain optimized to extract maximum value, and a regulator who balances the conflicting interests in the system through tolls, rights-of-way, permits, and restrictions. But one by one, these sector features are falling away. First, the new power sources from wind and solar feature generation costs that ultimately fall to zero, unlike fossil fuels that have a floor on their costs. Instead of being centralized in just one location, much future power generation will be highly distributed on rooftops and road surfaces. These future power generation assets may not be owned by the utility, eliminating monopolies and creating competition. The power they generate can be stored in small batteries and can be on instantly. Coal plants, however, can't even really shut off, and gas plants need an hour's notice to power up. The things that consume power no longer need to people to switch them on and off. They can self-manage in response to price signals, for example, and very importantly, they move around. The power will flow in multiple directions as conditions warrant. And finally, the byproducts are becoming socially unacceptable and are starting to carry specific costs like carbon taxes. So the roles of the players in the sector are in flux. Consumers become producers. The one-way grid no longer works. Financing the grid as a shared asset with tolls on consumers fails if the consumers become self-sufficient and don't use the grid or as part of a neighborhood of solar power producers and consumers who self-manage. So where's the killer app in this? Well, There are early signs that blockchain is both a killer app for utilities as well as its silent killer. Blockchain uh, researcher William Mugayar has coined the monemic atomic to help surface where blockchain kills, that is, it disrupts the established order or business model. A is for asset. As physical things like buildings and land, 
intellectual assets like music, movies, and design, or ephemeral assets like electrons, sunshine, and wind. T is for trust. This best fits where there is a lack of trust between parties. Disputes are a good sign, so if business model has a lot of disputes, or has an elaborate paper-based and computer systems for detailed record-keeping, blockchain might fit. O is for ownership, when knowing who owns what asset is important. M is for money, the store of value, narrowly defined as currency, of course, but it could also point to uh, things like loyalty points, shares, and tokens. I is for identity, for persons and things where individual identity is valuable. And C stands for contract, agreements between parties, that is people, organizations, and things. Power utilities are a perfect candidate for atomic. Utilities are asset-heavy businesses with lots of assets and few people. And many of the power-consuming assets have been pretty dumb devices. Trust is enabled by elaborate and expensive computer systems like SAP to provide detailed records of consumption. Ownership of land, where power lines encroach, is important, as will be ownership of smart assets like appliances, cars, and buildings that purchase power independently. Utilities generally rely on fiat currencies, but in a world where power purchasing fragments, creating loyalty may matter. The identity of all those smart assets will be critical to recording power consumption by asset. And finally, utilities have many thousands of contracts that govern their interactions with customers, landowners, suppliers, regulators, fuel sources, and soon thousands more to engage with smart devices. So how might utilities be killed by blockchain? Well, it's already happening, of course, just not symmetrically across all utilities and locations. First are cars. Cars get outfitted with blockchain and purchase power, not from grid suppliers, but from new distributed suppliers of power, that is, batteries and fuel stations, using blockchain to capture the transfer of electrons. A major new revenue source flows to the automakers. Next is battery power. Those sources either centralize sites or distributed through cars themselves switch on instantly during power spikes to shave off power peaks, an important profit line for utilities. This is already happening with Tesla's big battery in South Australia. Next, neighborhoods create district solar facilities. That is, sunny homes with solar panels generate and wheel excess power to shadier homes and batteries, using blockchain to record generation and consumption data for monthly sediment already happening in both New York and in Australia. Next, industrial power generators wheel their excess power to adjacent industrial assets, bypassing the grid. Smart appliances, which monitor power prices in the market, could switch off to avoid times of high power prices and purchase power from best available supplier, in the moment, recorded on blockchain for settlement. Utilities, therefore, compete to supply the cheapest electron. Now, utilities need to fight back, of course, and here's where blockchain creates value in a utility. How about better management of land contracts? Utilities both own land and administer rights of way to third-party land, and blockchain could be applied to administer those contracts, including payments, leases, royalties, title transfer, and settlement. An example of this in oil and gas is NAL Resources, who applies blockchain to their contracts for land and joint venture accounting. Another use case is distributed power purchasing. Utilities are already very efficient at power purchasing, but the purchasing model, that is, power purchase agreements for many megawatts over long periods, does not scale down properly to a future distributed solar model. Blockchain as a distributed database looks better suited than a large centralized one. And then there's prosumer administration. The thousands of possible independent solar installations will need their own administration capabilities for buying and selling power. Utilities could stand up a blockchain-based back office for a more distributed world. And then there's wholesale power trading. Power trading is not that different from other traded commodities. Dual sets of ledgers could be replaced by a single shared ledger on blockchain. And finally, smart metering. Blockchain-enabled metering could automatically sort out identity of meters, their owners, and power flows, creating a ledger of transactions for fast settlement. One of blockchain's hidden capabilities is the ability to create entirely new value, such as loyalty which is rather foreign to most utilities whose customers often had no choice and were slow to change suppliers. Tomorrow's energy customer will be a dispassionate machine that will behave entirely on the economics and power. Utilities must either figure out how to exploit the robots or get crushed. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. 
If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.